Preston McCall here again. Quarantine. We all have had to accept the fact that staying home is now the new reality until this COVID thing goes away. So you've dug out your art supplies and are thinking about being a little creative, making some new art, finally getting back to your love of being in the zone and making some new masterpieces. We all are there. And if you have just a little juice for making art, it's fun and you'll enjoy it. Okay, you live in a big city and there are some art galleries. You wonder if perhaps you could make some headway in developing your art into something more than just a hobby. Run a Google search on art galleries in your city. There will probably be some and you can begin looking at their websites. Get a feel for where they are if they are clustered together. Then go see them. Get some business cards, write down the person's name whom you met, and date the card. Start a basic journal and start making notes after you go visit them. That's how you get started. Now, let's talk about your artwork. Oil or acrylic paintings sell for more money than usually watercolors. If you do watercolors, they are simpler to do, buy the mats first as standard sizes from your art supply store and make your watercolors to fit the mats simple enough. There are many sources online for mats and especially pre-made frames that even have mats and glass. They are inexpensive. Use good watercolor but no reason to spend top dollar for the best most expensive paper. Just some good paper usually coming in a pad where you cut off the piece after you do it. Leaving it attached to the pad will cause it to not warp as much. Don't cut it off until it's dry and done. Just be sure you make the painting fit inside the mat, leaving a quarter inch around it or so, then sign and date them. Now, an important thing is to limit what you're painting. Don't do one of a duck and then one of a barn and then one of a mailbox. Keep your subject matter similar. Say 10 or 20 pieces of a landscape or some similar subject. Once you see a few, start over again. You will begin to see your style emerge. If not, then keep painting. Okay, you have a nice collection of paintings, some 20 or so. They are reasonably similar. Before you start framing them, take pictures of each one without the glaring glass of the frame, and then frame them. Open up your picture editing program. I use Corel, but Photoshop, and many others are available and there are even some that are free open source. Square them up and place them in one file on your computer. I try to get the highest resolution, three to 600 dots per inch and about six inches wide. This way you have a record of the pieces and a real easy spot to upload them onto your website. If you're familiar with your editing software, you can shoot a shot of the frame without the glass and superimpose the matted piece onto it so they look framed, consistent, and without the glare of the glass. Now, it's easy to email out to your friends some examples of what you're painting and get some feedback. Of course, they will all tell you they are genuine masterpieces and you might even sell a few. It's fun and you'll definitely get some feedback. Okay, you have a body of work and you're on your way. Keep it simple and keep your subject matter the same. Do not go off trying to do portraiture or complicated architecture unless you have some advanced experience. Portraits are hard. Making them actually look like who you're painting is a hard task. That's called verisimilitude, and it takes a while to figure it out. Stick with landscapes, florals, still lifes, or abstract pieces. You will get somewhere faster this way. Well, enough for now. I'll be making more of these Naked Artist Exposure videos, so click on the like and subscribe, please. Again, I am Preston McCall, and we appreciate you watching. Any questions, feel free to email me, and I am always willing to help artists get going, especially during these quarantine times. Thank you so much for watching.